Workers at Apple are looking to unionize. Paul, this is near and dear to your heart. Give us your thoughts on Apple and the stock. Apple is an absolutely incredible business. I agree. But one thing you remember, I do think Apple has a moat of sorts, and that's why Buffett has bought it. But there is a thing in the world of investing called mean reversion. What happens is companies that are highly, highly profitable, there'll be a lot of entrance to the market and profit will go down. And companies that are have very low profitability or declining might increase because people leave as they see it, it's very difficult to make money. Mm. Now with Apple, the stronger their moat, the harder it is for people to enter. And let's be honest here. I mean, what percentage of the population has an iPhone? I mean, Apple has a dominant hold. Look at, look at the tablet game. Apple yes. is absolutely like the phone game. I get it. Like there's Androids and there's all these Samsungs, etc. But the tablet game, I mean, come on, don't show up to me with any sort the of Surface Kindle or Pro. Something. You must be crazy. Well, by the way, I do like the Surface Pro. Oh, you do because it does mix the work. I prefer a PC, yeah. laptop, and desktop to an Apple. That's my personal preference. I feel like it's easier for me to do work. But with Apple, it's recently announced that pe- that the stores are starting to request thirty dollars an hour, and they're trying to unionize. This is part of mean reversion, potentially. Not saying it'll happen, but potentially, this is where highly profitable businesses, now people say, wait a second. Yes. You are making way too much money. Let's bring this down a little bit. For those watching at home, I I always ask Paul why he's so conservative in your projections moving forward. What could happen with these amazing companies besides the stock price just skyrocketing as revenue goes up? And of course, this is one of them. You know, Tesla may go through this moving forward with their their workforce. And so unionizations, give me your thoughts on these and how they affect businesses. Well, I mean, it just costs more money for a business. You know, and it's the whole adage of like, oh, it helps the workers. I won't get into that conversation right now. Spoiler, it doesn't. But- it, it, it just, it's going to cost the business more money because with unionization, you just look at across industries, when they go union, costs go higher for everyone, the workers, the, the, uh, the, the owners of the company, the companies themselves. So there is that issue. Now, what we'd like to do is let's take a look at Apple and see what the company looks like. So by the way, the goal of our show is to teach you at home how to get control of your investments. If you felt lonely out there, we will walk you through our eight pillar steps on what we look at when we're evaluating a company to be a potential shareholder. Paul, go ahead. All right, so this is our software. Um, Let's go to the eight pillars and we're gonna type in Apple. Boom. Let's go a little bit bigger. So guys, this is Apple's chart. This is the 10 year chart. I I mean, obviously this thing has been on a tear for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, So our eight pillars, let's start with that. The first thing, and this is not a pillar, but the first thing we look at is the market cap. This is $2.7 trillion. If you want to buy every single share the company has outstanding at the current market price, it's going to cost you 2.7 trillion. Okay. Pillar number one, we want the five year PE to be less than 22.5. So make it real easy. It's twenty. It's forty point seven two. That's an X. So it's a little expensive. Does that mean you avoid it? No. If Apple were going to grow one hundred percent a year for the rest of the time, that would be a screaming deal, right? So pillar number two, we want the five year return on invested capital greater than nine percent. Good lord. Seth, look at this. Thirty one point seven. This is probably one of the reasons why Buffett and Munger love this company. They're able to take the cash that they generate and it doesn't take a lot of capital to keep increasing that cash. This helps their moat. Side note, they pay a 0.5% dividend, about $14.6 billion per year. This is not one of the pillars, but it's something I want you to understand. Everyone thinks that dividends are safe. You have to compare the $14.6 billion dividend to their five-year and one-year free cash flow it is well below the $72 billion they've generated in the last five years and well below last year's $100 billion. Pillar number three, we want revenue growth over the last five years. So we go to our income statement here on the software. Five years ago, 229. Last year, 365. So there is revenue growth. Wow. Pillar number four, we want net income growth. So we scroll down a little bit on the, net, on the income statement. 48.35 to 95 billion. Check mark there. Almost doubling its profit over the last five years. Okay. We're, ha- we're, we're halfway home. We're going to show you what you should be paying for Apple price, the stock price. We're going to transfer all these financials into what we think we're buying this at. Stay tuned. We'll show you. Keep, keep going, Paul. Pillar number five. And to Seth's point, we're trying to teach a process here, right? We're trying to show you how to find the value of the stock. So pillar number five is shares outstanding. 
We want shares outstanding decreasing. We don't want the company to be diluting the owners who've trusted it for a long time. When they increase shares outstanding, they are decreasing your ownership in the business. I tell that to Elon, Paul. I know. So uh, the end of the beginning of five years ago was end of six years ago, 21.88 billion down to 16.7 no. billion shares. They have bought back almost 25% of the company, which means if you own shares five years ago, your ownership now gives you 25% more as a percentage of the revenue and profit that you had before, just by sitting there and doing nothing but holding on to the company. Another reason why Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett love the company. Pillar number six. So pillar number six has to do with debt. We always have to consider debt in our numbers. So what I've determined was I take the five-year average free cash flow back on this main page. I multiply it by five. 72.3 times five equals $360 billion. I want their total long-term liabilities to be under $360 billion. So I go to the balance sheet on our software. I scroll all the way to the bottom. Long-term liabilities, 162. Come on. Less than half. So they can pay off. The, if they just did the last five years over again, they pay off their all long-term debts in less than two and a half years. Paul, this really speaks to monitoring your downside risk. Prior to meeting you, I would have never even contemplated looking at how much debt a company might have, especially if we're facing tough, tough times ahead. Of course, like, you know, a few years ago, General Motors did $400 billion in revenue and their market cap was $17 billion and they had $270 billion in debt. Mm. That's the hard part. Mm -hmm. All right, the final, the final two pillars have to do with cash flow. So what we do is we go to our cash flow statement. Now, guys, Free cash flow is cash from operations, less your capital expenditures. This is the money they can use to do one of five things. Pay down debt, buy back shares, make acquisitions, pay dividends, and invest back in themselves. They can do all these things with the free cash flow, okay? So we added this line to our cash flow statement to give you the number. Five years ago, they did $51.7 billion. Last year, $93 billion in free cash flow. That's a check mark. Our final pillar. We, we want to come up with some sort of starting point to look at the value of the company. So we take the five-year average free cash flow, 68 billion, we multiply it by 20, and that is 1.36, am I doing that math right? Yes, trillion dollars. Okay, the actual price was 2.72 trillion, literally double the amount. Oh so that's an X. But again, does that mean you don't buy it? No, if Apple is going to grow 100% a year for the rest of the time, I would, I would literally sell my soul to get shares in Apple. Mm -hmm. So let's go to our eight pillars tab where all the math is done for you. And look, what we love, it's the two valuation metrics. So it's just a matter of the price coming down, okay? At this point, we're standing here and we're looking at this company going, okay, it has all the other attributes that we like. It's just an expensive price from what we see here. So what's our next step? Well, let's be very clear. If you're watching at home, these eight pillars, we, we do all the math for you. It's a one-click button for our companies. If you want to look at almost any company in the world, you can click our eight pillars and skip all this mumbo jumbo. But I had a very difficult time, Paul, translating all these financials into what I should be paying for stock price. A lot of people just throw out random numbers. Of course. And so we're going to get toward a price target that we are buying Apple at. Go ahead, and Paul. And a lot of YouTubers out there will throw out random numbers based on where the stock price has gone. That's not what I'm doing. What we're trying to teach here is we're trying to teach a process of valuing a business. So we created the stock analyzer tool. It'll, every investment's the present value of all future cash flow, and we don't know the future. But we can make projections of the future based on the data we have, right? So the stock analyzer tool. You can pick one to 20 years analysis. I always pick 10 automatically, and I pick three assumptions. So it'll show you the data over the last 10 years. Now you can see their revenue growth has been increasing over time. I still like to be conservative because my goal, there's 10,000 companies out there. I want to make conservative estimates on companies and buy the ones that fit my wheels house. So for Apple, I'm going to go four, six, and 8% revenue growth because it's already so big. It's going to be hard to really get higher growth. Profit margin. I'm going to go 21, 22.5, and 24. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go 20, 21.5, and 23. Free cash flow margin, 24, 25, 26. PE, this is where everybody's going to attack me. I'm still going to do 13, 15, 17, even though the recent numbers are double. Guys, it's a huge company. The way you justify a higher PE ratio is to have a lot of growth potential. The bigger the company is, the harder it is for it to grow. If my company does a million dollars a year in revenue and Apple does 300 billion, which one's more likely to double in the next year? The small one. Correct. 
So you should give a higher multiple for smaller companies with more growth potential. And finally, I do a 12.5% return for my desired return because guys, you can invest in an ETF and get nine or 10%. So give yourself margin of safety. Give yourself a reason to buy an individual company. As simple as this, I hit the analyze button. Current price is 165. Current price 165. And my value ranges are as low as 60 to 70 and as high as 100 to 115. And I think I've always said under 120, I'm interested in Apple. It's at 165. So it's a little overpriced right now. The good news is on our software, I'm going to add 115 to my watch list. It'll notify me when Apple hits 115 and goes below that, notify me. There you go. If I want to go to my watch list, it tells me all the stocks and what price I have them at. So this gets me ready for when Apple does go to the price I want it to go to. Now, if it doesn't happen, but it's been a year or two and the fundamentals have gotten better, I need to reassess Apple. But now we have taught that because it was confusing for you before we came in and taught that.